Uh, Dennis Jones is my name, Senior Advisor here at uh, CCA Financial Planning. I'm here with Damien Butler, who's the Principal Accountant at uh, Butler Chartered Accountants. Morning, Damien. Morning, Dennis. Um, we're here today to have a bit of a chat about self-managed super funds. They're obviously a hot topic, and in particular, self-managed super funds buying property. I mean, this has been uh, around for many years, of course, but uh, we work with a lot of health professionals, a lot of doctors, chiropractors, and many of them um, would like to own their practice premises uh, one day, um, and, and self-managed super is certainly a viable option for some of them. Damien, what's your, what's your view on this? Dennis, look, I think the self managed super fund environment uh, to own practice premises is, makes a lot of sense, particularly to medical professionals and the like, wanting their practice buildings in there. Um, there's a number of benefits because, firstly, you know who the tenant is. So, from an investment perspective, you've got a secure tenant. Um, possibly, or probably, the uh, the practice is already paying down rent uh, to another to another tenant. landlord. Exactly. Yeah. So, you're actually paying off your own your own mortgage and getting an interest in it. Uh, more importantly, though, inside super, you've got the asset protection benefits, um, protection from bankruptcy as well. Can we have a little bit of a chat about the asset protection issue? Um, it's often mm -hmm. overlooked, isn't it? That's it, right. It's something that, and it used to be limited, I think, to about 1.3 million, but now it's unlimited, I believe, if it's structured correctly. Correct, mm -hmm. yes. So I think with self managed super, though, I mean, there's costs to set it up. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously ongoing uh, compliance costs, there's responsibilities to the tax office and ASIC. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly self-managed super is not for everyone. Correct, yes. There's a lot of responsibility when you um, take on a self-managed super fund and a lot of responsibilities as trustees or directors of trustee companies that you need to be aware of. But certainly, you know, as long as you go through the pros and cons and aware of that, and walking into it with uh, eyes wide open, then it can certainly be a, a great benefit. With good advice. Correct, <laughs> that's right. Um, look, I have a bit of personal experience here. My uh, self-managed super fund owned practice building I have in Port Melbourne. So um, I understand the benefits and the pros and the issues. We've actually created a little bit of a schematic here on the whiteboard behind me. I hope you can see it on camera. Um, it, it involves the property uh, down here. Uh, being owned by a security trust, um, which, which sits between the super fund, the self-managed fund, <coughs> security trust owning the property. Um, there, in this case, there was a bank loan uh, taken to help buy the property together with uh, some equity that was already in the super fund. And um, one of the advantages here is that um, it's, it's what we call a non-recourse loan, where the bank only has security over that particular property. Um, we've also added to this particular case study the situation where the client uh, involved is uh, over 55, so we've started a, a transition to retirement TTR pension for them. Um, Damien, just want to comment on some of the, the tax advantages of this sort of structure. Um, when the pension starts, I believe the, there's then no tax on the earnings or the rent within the, within the fund. Correct, Dennis. So once the um, the assets are under pension, there's no tax on the on the earnings of those or the growth of those. But you've got to be over 50, 55 or over normally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 55. Then once you reach 60, um, any pension that you take out of that fund is tax free as well. So between the age of 55 to 60, the the pension comes out. It's taxable, but it's a rebateable income stream. So you got 15% rebate on that. So it's quite a tax effective way to um, to get money out of the super fund. We had a case uh, the other day now with clients over 50, the concessional or deductible contributions gone to from 25,000 to, to 35,000. Over 50? Over 50, correct, yeah. yeah. I'm, go I'm glad I'm getting all this right because this guy's an expert in this space. <laughs> I hope he is anyway. Um, so in that case with the client, we've started a, it's this situation, they have their property and their self-managed fund. We've started a transition to retirement pension and they have to pull out, as you know, 4% of the capital value from mm -hmm. the office. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But then we've, we've maximised their contributions. So we've got the business actually putting um, now 35000 into the super fund as a concessional contribution. And in addition to that, the rent being paid by the business um, to the fund, so this is getting a bit messy, but the rent being paid uh, I think in their case it was about 55000 a year. So that's going into the super fund. Um, so we've got concessional contributions, 
and rent. And the interesting thing is the rent going into the super fund, once it's in pension mode, the tax on that rent is how much? Tax free. Tax free. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, and that's why we've got a smiley face here. It looks a bit crazy, but <laughs> I guess the point we're trying to make is it's a really good strategy for some people and uh, the net result is a significant tax saving. Correct. But one of the other issues here, um, these people, I think the loan was around 500,000 and they're going to use um, the rent coming in and uh, also um, contributions to to pay down, I'll make this another colour, to pay down uh, the bank loan. Correct. Now normally, if you had that outside of super, you'd be paying down the bank loan with after-tax money, potentially taxed at up to 47%. 49% now with 2% oh. debt levy. I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was good. <laughs> but now that's important, isn't it? Because paying down the capital component of, of debt, even mm -hmm. when the interest is deductible, people don't often understand how much that costs after tax. That's right, yeah. In this case, with these clients, I worked out it was about 152000 saving over the time to pay down that debt. That's in addition to the other tax benefits uh, and asset protection. So, um, you know, look, the other benefit what I like with that, Dennis, is that uh, you're using the contributions as well. Um, so the contributions will be taxed, but the deductions against the uh, rental property will also reduce the amount of tax there. Um, you then have a fair but, bit of cash. But what's the tax rate on the contributions? 15%. Which is a whole lot better than 49%. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, And that assumes that the, uh, the individuals aren't over the, the $180,000 limit of their taxable income. Um, so the 15% tax rate. But it frees up a lot of cash to pay down that loan quickly which means that you can actually get that loan paid off quickly, which means that then you've got the 55,000 probably indexed and, and then, you know, after a period of time, um, re, re um, uh, stated to market value. You know, your, your commercial leases are three by three or five by five. At the end of those three year or five years terms, you go back to the market, you work out what the market rental is. Mm -hmm. um, so there can be a fair bit of cash flow coming through. And once you've paid off that loan, that enables a lot more cash to come through and invest in other yeah. assets. So you start diversifying your portfolio as well. That's a very good point, Damien. I think in addition to the property, it is very important that, that people not only have the property in their super fund, but obviously have cash um, and maybe some blue chip shares, maybe even some global shares. Um, we're now using exchange traded funds, which are a really good and low cost way of accessing right. things like the top 100 global shares mm. um, to complement the property portfolio. So you don't want just the property, yep. even though initially that might be the case, but over yeah. time we want to build a more diversified portfolio. Now the other thing that's really important too is insurance within the super fund, making sure that people have you know, life cover and total disability. We've had you know, many claims over the years, so mm. it's important that the super fund um, that that is addressed, and that's now a legal requirement. I that's think. right. So it's a requirement of the trustees to consider that for the members. So certainly need to go through that. The benefits of it. So self-managed super buying property um, where it's appropriate can be a great strategy, but once again, it, it does require um, good advice to make sure it's suitable for you. Uh, thanks for your time, and thank you, David. You're welcome.